Myself, my name is Chris, and I will be doing a panel. And it's titled uh, Crassus versus the Gladiators, but we're lucky to have Todd join us as well. Yay! Uh, Woo! Caesar! <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, what we're going to do is, uh, as you know, you have the screen. We're going to show a couple of scenes and have the guys talk about it, and then we'll. You're more than welcome once you know uh, they're ready to ask questions, and then we'll move on to the next thing, and then that should take us for the uh, the time. So if you have a question, so we get to we'll get to you, and you can ask. You know, we'll answer. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so how is everybody? Awesome. Just go down the line. We're good now that we're Spartacon. Yes. <laughs> Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You guys all set? Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, 
guys. Thank everyone for coming. Um, I'd like to start out. Is that, is that annoying? <laughs> All right. Well, to start out, just a brief introduction. Um, I was thinking as I was preparing for this, thinking of your characters in the show, you were alive back then. Okay? Would you consider your character a friend? So, in other words, Dan, would you like hang out with Agon? And uh, would you like think? Yeah, would you be mates with Julius Caesar? He is Same thing with <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with uh, Marcus Crassus. Would you guys consider them? He was a great party giver. <laughs> he was a great mate. He was a great party giver as long as you went on the wrong side of him. Yeah. You didn't owe him too much money and you paid up on time. You know. But uh, he was he was good for his friends. So you would be a friend of his, and you would say, yeah, if I like was a friend, guy, if I wasn't. If I wasn't his friend, I'd be very wary. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'd be mates with Caesar. Why not? Why not? Too Just aggressive. What about Oh, we'd be super close. <laughs> 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 Yeah, there's no love lost I'm between Caesar and Tiberius. No, he's, <laughs> yeah, he was pretty aggressive all the time. I think he had, you know, carried a lot of darkness. So I don't, I don't think we'd probably be mates. Okay. Might be like me at Crest's party. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not at each other and then just walk the other way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, th I think so. <laughs> um, you know, I, don't, I guess it would be hard to like, break through Agron's kind of war at first, so that would probably be like, like uh, the hardest thing for him. So you know, once I got to know him, then I probably would be friends with him. But at first, I'd probably be like, such a grumpy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you guys to sit there so you can see the screen. Yeah, so you got, you got screen. The and I'm going to get this episode all set up. We're going to watch it. We're going to sit there. All right. Let's make a crocodile. That works. <laughs> Shut a little bit. 
Holding no trust even among their own kind. This one saw the difference. Gladiators standing beside Spartans in valued position. He held Gannicus in a fallen Gaul. His own equals. Has he given voice? Only to rude curse and curse. There is yet more of one tongue. You fucking cunts. Still conscious breath toward insult. I would care to own gladiators such as this and turn hard men toward harder purpose. <laughs> so I would see this one soften. Nail him to cross. Stand warning to all who refuse to break proper word. Just saying that the makeup effects, the the uh, black eye, and they put whip up, uh, whip marks on my back took about three hours, and of course you don't see half of the makeup that they do. Um, let's see. Somebody said it was the water cold. I think it was cold. The water was cold. Was it? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Yeah, because it was in the middle of winter in New Zealand, and that's not fun at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, if anyone else have first. So There's, that was the first time we worked together, though, I think. Yeah, it was, because uh, the two worlds were kind of separate for a long time. My world, our world, was, because uh, we worked together in it. We shared a world, it's called the Roman world. Uh, and uh, it wasn't until later on, obviously, that we, you know, obviously we're trained together, we bonded and had that extraordinary experience in boot camp, and, we both were aware of each other's work going on, but we weren't doing stuff together until later on. And it was so much fun to finally, you know, come together, especially, you know, later on with Liam, obviously, and all the guys. It was great. And that scene really was about Dan giving a great performance and us just enjoying watching him suffer. <laughs> that was the first time as well that, I'd that I got to sort of introduce his sort of... Um, like darker, sick element, like of enjoying the fact that I was, that I was sort of pinning him. So that, I just remember reading, getting to these parts of the scripts and I was like, okay, this would be kind of a nice um, time to sort of introduce that part of the character just to have him. I wanted to sort of keep layering him and 
sort of introduced different elements and that was sort of the one where I was like, okay, he, you know, have him a little bit sick and enjoy this moment and keep, you know, the audience would be like, jeez, like, I remember Stephen tonight saying that it was kind of the first season where they, where the audience started to become a little bit split in the sense that they were siding with us at times and then they'd switch back to the Rebels. So it was kind of that nice moment to go, this is kind of one of Caesar's sort of dark sides. So for me personally, I, you know, I wanted to enjoy that. It was a fun shoot though. It was good, but it was a very so really fun shoot. Mm. I remember a day uh, when we were about to shoot a battle. Um, I think it was, yeah, towards the end, we were mounted, you know, it's all in studios as well, enormous studios. They built battlefields. And we're on our charges, we're on our horses, and we're sitting there, and I'm sitting next to Todd, with my legions behind me, and I remember just looking at Todd like that, and we both sort of, <laughs> 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 because, you know, then you realize you're living your dream, you know, you're doing a job you love, and in extraordinary circumstances, yeah. And then we kind of get to experience, I say this each time, we get to experience it the same way you guys do, because obviously we're surrounded by troops, and it's, we have that kind of experience, but then it's all green screen surrounding us, so then we get to watch it as like an audience member for you guys, like with the camps all in it and the surrounding mountains and the other battlefields and forests. And, you know, so we then get to see the experience as well, so it's kind of thrilling for us as well to watch it back and, and see the whole world created. Um, yeah, and also uh, <clears throat> because the worlds were separate, Whenever you watch the episode, there'd be so much that you just had no idea about, and you yeah. could watch other people's performance. Like before, I made a comment when I saw uh, Liam and Cynthia, and I was like, I, I mean, I can't remember that scene, but you just watch it, you go, know, "Oh my god, that's yeah. amazing!" And, and that, that was probably the coolest thing. And also the fact that I got to work with Simon for the first time is we're so separate that it's also exciting to work with different people on the show, whereas you know you're usually stuck in your own little world, and then you get, "Oh sweet, I get to act." You know, against Simon, and uh, you know he did his thing, and you know I did my thing, and then I had to. Most of that crucifixion was actually shot on a separate day in front of my parents. <laughs> yeah, they came in on that day, and uh, and it was all like the, the kind of close up. Were you there on the second day? Yeah, because I, I, I was doing the pinning, I was doing the nailing and stuff. I remember your parents there. Yeah, and, and so they're just watching me like scream and all that sort of stuff. And they just had to catch, like, get a lot of the, the close ups. They popcorn. Um, <laughs> I don't think they did. <laughs> I don't think they did. But um, no, it was a great scene to do. It, it, it you know, it was fun. Um, the guy who's grabbing my hair, he was doing that for real. Um, and after a while, you're like, oh, after like take 10, you're like, you know, yanking it back and all that sort of stuff. And you know, you don't say anything because it does get you in the mood. But after a while, you're like, um, and that's, and that's another thing when you do a lot of stunts, like at first people are like, yeah, I'll do this and they'll do one take. And then after, you know, take four or five, they're like, I probably should have listened to the stunt guys and like not, you know, you, you learn how to just sell it without actually having to fully exert yourself because yeah. it's exhausting after like take five, take six and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, any questions you guys like to ask the guys? Yes. You know me, I always have a question. <laughs> I, since we watched the crucifixion scene there, tell us about how you, the how they did the, you know, because well, the they didn't, yeah. he didn't obviously pound nails in your hands. So I mean, <laughs> kind of describe how that scene worked as far as. Um, I, I know they, they, um, they like had half a nail that they would just stick onto my hand. So it was just stuck on there. Um, and in regards to going through, I can't remember how they, they had like three nails. They had like a big, oh, yeah, the big size nail that you could hold, and then it was metal and it looked realistic. And then I would put it in between the web of his fingers when we were lying it up. So then the shot would be shot, shot yeah, from the side. The angle. Then we had the the sticking nail, which was just a quarter of a nail that they'd stuck to the part. And then they had a spring loaded nail that I put up the top. And then as I tapped the top, the nail would go in and I would then squeeze it in between my fingers to hold the, that wow. part down and then tap it again and then hold the next part and then they just had to kind of sell each of the shots so that it looked like it lined up and looked like it was actually entering the skin. Well, I heard somebody ask about whether he was hanging there and I didn't hear what you'd said. Were you actually hanging or was that green screen? Or no, I, I, was, I was hanging, I think. Um, 
harness. That had, yeah, they had a harness yeah. or something like that to kind of keep me propped up. But still, you're like, yeah. you know, hanging yeah, down, really tied up. It, yeah, it wasn't exactly comfortable, yeah. but you, you could, you're in, you, you were fine enough for the shot that they wanted to do. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was all painted on. Okay, you know me, the psychers, I always knew the people. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I don't know who it hurts. Here we go. Oh, you got it. Yeah, how did they do the blood part? Like, as you were kneeling it in, like, how did they, the blood part? So they had in that compression thing again, they filled it with blood so that when the needle went in, it would, when, sorry, when the slide into the spring area it would like compress the blood out oh, yeah just to yeah that's pretty much and they can enhance it afterwards with yeah. the CG blood on top if they want yeah yeah they did it this time so I don't know why I'm telling you that <laughs> <laughs> it just it looks so real <laughs> yeah yeah they used to have little spring loaded systems or they put the blood in shoot it and then they cut into the shot as the blood gets kind of dispersed and like all different stuff yeah, yeah that they had some amazing, you know. As you watch it, you feel the pain. It's like, well, that was my performance. <laughs> awesome performance, by the way. I, I can shrink with the vessel. Uh, but the, the, the props department and the, the visual effects department had some amazing, like, you know, when people get their throat slit, like, they'd have tubes that go a lot oh, there, wow. like, with things pumping out. They'd have, like, five people behind you going, you know, squeezing, squeezing the blood out. It just, they just by, by the third season, or like I guess fourth, if you want to say that, they were just absolute pros at just blood and this and that, and coming up with creative ways of killing people and things like that. So they had three blood types too. So they'd be like a, a set blood, which they'd cover everywhere. Then they'd have kind of like a oozy sort of yeah. physical blood, which they'd have barrels of, and then they'd have makeup blood, which is like a sugar. Like a sugar syrup, which you can eat, you can have it in your mouth, like it's, it's fine, it's safe. I don't know why we didn't get fat. Yeah. <laughs> so much blood. Yes. <laughs> well, you never had blood on you. <laughs> you were always commanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you were doing nothing. The last episode. Oh, one episode. Yeah. Go for it, go for it. Sorry, because it was good. My question is Caesar, or sorry, Todd, yeah. talked about you know, how this brought out his dark side. I'd like to know, like, Dan, what was Agron thinking at that time when he was actually being crucified? Mm -hmm. And then I'd also like to know what Simon was thinking at that time. Just kind of your thoughts, but not your thoughts as Simon Toddy Dan. Oh, it's a character? Oh, it's, okay. Because um, Dan's like, ugh. <laughs> um, I think that's the moment where he realizes he made a mistake. That, um, like, he's all being cocky, and then as soon as you see Simon mentions, or uh, Crassus uh, mentions, you know, make an example of him or something like that, you see the face change. And for me, that was like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, you know, things are getting real. I may not see, you know, Nazir again. And that is, I, I think, for me, the moment where he turns completely and is like, no, I am no longer going to chase war, I need to be back with the people that I love. So I think that was his moment there, so. <laughs> well, uh, the thing with Crassus is, um, is uh, he, uh, he was utterly ruthless when he had to be, but he wasn't, uh, he wasn't a psychopath. He, he didn't enjoy cruelty for its own sake. So everything he did had a reason. That was a wonderful thing to play. So when he decides to do that to Agron, and when he decides to do the decimation, it's uh, for a very specific reason. And the real Crassus did that. I know it's terrible, but it worked. The legions were falling apart. They were being beaten by the rebels. And he knew that something drastic had to be done to make them one unit, so that they were more scared of him than they were of the rebels. And I think it's the same in this scene. He decides to do it not because he's, uh, he, he's in love with cruelty. And I wanted to kind of express that somehow, that it was just had to be done. I wanted to do it. I wasn't going to stay around and watch just for the hell of it. But, yeah. I can That's see right, that, literally, uh, in the little yeah. subtle choices. <laughs> no, no, even just like you'd, you'd have a little moment with your head where you tilt to the side and then deliver. 
because you're obviously struggling with the the fact that you're making this decision, but it's like it's not out of a sick. Someone asked me actually about what would I have done if Tiberius had drawn the white stone. Yeah. And the, the answer has to be that I would have let it take its course. But I was mm. praying that it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. He was relieved when it didn't happen. But yeah, That's tough, great character to play. <laughs> <laughs> yes, question. Yeah, thank you. Ty, last year, for those of us, people that were not here, you told me great story because we all talked about all the, the effects and the blood, uh, what you did to get all the makeup and blood and everything on you and then have to go sit in your trailer. Oh. <laughs> so if you can let these people know, just, you know. Every day, the, like you get up at, I think our pickup was 4.50 from the, the hotel, so we're like, you know, I don't even know what day it is when they get up and then you get to work at 5.30, yeah, then you're straight. Wait, you're straight in the makeup before breakfast, weren't you? No, you had to post breakfast. Oh no, costume. That's right. Yeah, yeah costume. The, the first, the first <laughs> oh yeah. You got like ours was different to yours. Oh wait, right. you when you're in your Roman outfit. Yeah, when you're in the Roman outfit. Yeah, yeah. So we would then, and if it was battle related things, so you'd get get there and then you'd do costume, but you'd have to do makeup stuff usually first to sort of set the whole body up. But they, you know, and then it's like quarter to six in the morning, you don't even know where you are, and it's freaking freezing cold, and then they start adding the layers, so you get your dirt, where well, you get the sort of brown layer, then you get the dirt layer, then you get like a thicker dirt, then you get like the blood that's set in, then you get the wet blood, then they come and put the costume on, and then they throw blood at you again, <laughs> to the point where literally, sometimes I'd be stuck to my trailer chair, <laughs> so they come in and go, go to breakfast, and I'm like, yeah, okay, cool, uh, <laughs> and they'd have to rip it off, literally, and then at the end of the day, when we had the cleaners come in, because you'd have to have a shower at the end of the day, and it looked like there'd been a massacre in my bathroom, because there'd be blood all over the shower walls, all along the sink, and you'd miss parts or a bit in your hair or behind your ear. And your towels would be covered in blood. You'd wake it was up just in like... the morning, the pillow would come with you. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> but also, um, also, like that was just in the morning. Then they have to keep putting coats and coats on you throughout the day because it needs to look like it's fresh. And so when it dries, like it's like oh, and then they put more on, and they put more on, and more on, and more on, and yeah, it's just it's crazy. I remember back in first season, you know, the big battle at the very very end. There was a day, a day, I got there at, I think, 6 a.m., full blood everywhere, and I wasn't used until 6 o'clock that night. So I'm just stuck in my trailer, like, uh, I've watched every single episode of The Wire. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you just, you, like, you just kind of like, uh, and you are, you are literally stuck to, and if you have your, your, your um, dressing gown on, that sticks to it as well. So you try not to do anything, and oh, it's crazy, but, you know, that's... You know, all part and parcel of like playing make believe and you know dressing up and all that sort of stuff. So <laughs> that's what that's what we're doing on a sophisticated level, of course. That's exactly what we're doing. And there was a particular makeup. You understand what I mean by continuity, of course. Like you have to maintain a certain look for certain shots. They have to match. And there was a certain wonderful makeup girl called Joe Fountain, and uh, she she was she won't mind me saying this because she knows she's fantastic but absolutely obsessed down to the dot. The dot of blood. So, you, you fought a battle and cut. Yeah, we'll go again on that one. It's all right, Joe, it's all right. It's, it's general, it's, it's all right, it's good. No, I just need to... And after six hours of that, and you're in a scene, and it's me and Liam like, would that you have been a Roman? And it could have said, uh, whatever the line was. And she, the brush is coming in. <laughs> Joe, not <right> now. <laughs> We'd get our hair fixed up, a hair would come across my face in the, back, in the middle of the battle and they'd stop and go, we're going to go that part again, Joe would come in. Yeah. <laughs> no, hair was always the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. Hair was the biggest thing because it's obviously right there, but yeah, they're sprinting in late, you know, they call final checks and all of a sudden it was like rats coming out of everywhere. <laughs> Just like all these people with all different jobs, like costume come up, fix this, and makeup, and then, you know, the AD's like yelling at everyone, like, all right, everybody get out, get out, get out. Yeah. And then they all sprint off and then you, you know, you do the scene, but it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. But when certain scenes, like with the blood, or if it's raining and you have to look wet, yeah. that's the worst. 
because um, Sorry. Yeah, they put like like kind of glycerin stuff in your hair and it's just like yeah, and put it all over your body it looks like it's you're, you're wet and it's it's, it's um, raining oh. oh hey young man <laughs> Yeah, Sexy surprise! Yeah, ladies and gentlemen! Ladies and gentlemen! Get up here, young man! Tiberius! Come on! Yeah. 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 Alright, Tiberius. Tiberius would like to sing you a song. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd come and watch, but apparently I'm uh, gonna sit in a nice chair. Nice, lovely. How is everybody? Yeah. Good. Enthralled. Good to see you all. Thank you, bye. <laughs> Who else has a question? Oh, yeah. He did a great job actually because um, obviously I'm the only um, English person and uh, I was using my own voice and Christian obviously is not English, he's Australian and uh, you know he, he matched it perfectly. He did a great job. Mm. Still love you. <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't difficult, it was the physically enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, yeah, hands down, that's easy. I can pass this on pretty quick. Yeah, for sure. That was, that was, um, what cool. was that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, physical contact I had with WIS. Yeah, that. The producers like had to come down and like let us know a few weeks in advance what was going to happen, and I thought it was a joke. I laughed at it and it's like, no, 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 seriously. And then I thought it was actually a fantastic character thing because yeah. it switched everything for me and created like a monster in a sense. Um, and it was the ultimate revenge for Tiberius to get on Caesar two. Um, it was we had people who had to walk off set during the shooting because um, it was. Confronting. They were too loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, um, said, they, they said, I remember them saying about you doing that scene, they said, man, it was like, again and again, and by the end, the best takes were when you were absolutely ragged. Yeah, and well, they, we, the heat, I mean, no. TJ set up three, <laughs> he set up three cameras so they could get everything and not necessarily have to go through it too much. Usually they don't set up three because of the lighting elements, you know, they, they just shoot out the other angles. But they, um, he did it five times back to back from the start of the scene. And those guys that were grabbing me that I was having a, f a battle with as well, they were like ex-MMA guys. <laughs> they were full on like, you're really fighting with them. And then one of the takes as well, which they use when he swings the fire stick, they're meant to like, what's called pull the hit where you pull it just the last second so it looks like it hits me. But he swung through and he smashed me in the side of the face with the fire torch. And it was like, obviously real fire. <laughs> it's going. So he hit me in the face and I remember it just next to the eye too and we kept going and they actually, if you watch it closely, that's the take that they end up using. Wow. And we did five takes in a row right through to the end because TJ was like, we want to get that. We want to have the yeah. full effect of you know what it would be like. And we were, that was like three hours of that, of just like concert. But a little, you know, a little inside joke is two weeks later, the producer comes up to me and he goes, um, so we're gonna have to reshoot that stuff. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, awesome. He's like, no, no, we're reshooting it next Friday. Like, Bullshit. <laughs> we're not doing that again. Anyway, they were serious and we were gonna have to go back and reshoot and then in the end that what they all they wanted was a bit more of the close up of the ass. So we got ass doubles in and I got to meet my ass double. A Make lovely sure. woman. Yeah. <laughs> so there ain't no hair back there, that's smooth that shit. Smooth and tight. So literally yeah, it was an African American guy, and um, no, so they, uh, I, I got to literally meet him. I was like, oh, "Hey, you go, mate." He's like, "Yeah, I'm playing your ass double." I was like, "Awesome!" So then they shot all close-ups of the ass. So that's actually not mine that you see in the close-up. All Christians. But I've watched that thing. <laughs> that's that was my scene. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to give my emotion, my emotional scene. Shall I go ahead? Well, 
I think uh, I think it was um, when they brought in his body. That was one of them. Plus plus I, plus Corey coming back as well. And finding out about that. But th it was it was that was one of the great things about the show for me. It was laden with emotion. It wasn't just about here's another battle, here's another sex scene. You know, they wrote characters. And uh, I think that's why it's lasted. I think that's why all you guys still love it. I think he would have had no choice but to do what he did, given his set of values. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, before she left, if she would have told... When Cedar brought her to you. Yeah. And ah, I see what you mean. Yeah. I see what you mean. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have placed her above his son, okay. even though he would have been very harsh on him, I'm sure. He still wouldn't have placed her uh, above his son. Right. I don't think because of the where he came from. He, he probably wouldn't have killed her. He probably wouldn't have killed yeah. her. Yeah. I always thought that if she told you, maybe he would have put her in a safer place, to where she felt like she didn't need to leave you and not leave her under Tiberius because she was so scared. Yeah, I'll text Stephen. I'll ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had no idea, and when he finds out, right. he he for, he understands. He understands, but he still goes to the final conclusion yeah, that he... Yeah, because you captured all that in your face when yeah. she was telling you, like, you could see the hurt, yeah. but you could also see the crisis. And I think as, as yeah. a viewer, as a viewer, I think you could think as a, as a, as a, as a, like a, a morally right audience member, I was the same. I was like, but just like, you know, you could just kind of let her off, <laughs> right. off slide, which is the best way. Like you said, the writing was so fantastic because, yeah. and Simon's performance, he gives you that conflict. So that yeah. he knows he's, you know, he's feeling it, but he chooses otherwise out of principle, and that's why you're right. exactly. an awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. I love these guys. This is a lot of the reason why yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, stays the commander. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If if she hadn't left, then no one, no one would have known that she left. So nobody would have known because the Roman was all about what everybody thought about them. It would have made you look weak. This is the way I took it. So that you had to crucify them. Is that you think? Yeah, I mean, in, in reality, Crassus treated his slaves really well because he thought of them as really sophisticated tools. Mm -hmm. He even took part in educating his own slaves and he had high-end slaves. So he treated them really well. He valued them. Um, but slaves were still slaves, unless they were freed, in which case they could even become a citizen, you know. Um, but the order as it was then, and her position, and what happened, you know, it was his son. Hello, Dominic. Yes. Um, so, the question now, I know over the course of, at least, I mean, you guys only had your characters for about a season, and Dan, you had um, two seasons of yours. Um, Three. Well, two and a half. <laughs> but, um, was there any, in the writing, again, it's so good, and your performances were amazing. Fuck yeah. Was there something, yeah. Fuck yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just give a round of applause for that. did or something that happened to your character that you did absolutely not something. And again, that comes to the writing being as good as it was and it just kind of hits you. Like well, we all know Todd's. <laughs> 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 yeah. well, he, he, he asked for that, though. He, he asked him to write that in. Uh, uh, I was pretty shocked what to find out what Tiberius had to do to Corey. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the car, it's kind of tricky when you're playing it to not kind of judge it. You have to find a reason. And when, when we were spending 12 hours a day in character, you kind of, you saw through the eyes of the character first and you went, that, that makes sense to do that. Don't let the Christian part judge it because otherwise it won't be able to do service to the writers. So that part, the second one, 
with uh, Caesar for sure. And then when they sat me down in the office and said, so um, you're going to kill Crixus? I spent about 10 minutes telling them that I didn't want to do it. And I, that was my own 20 year old ego getting in the way saying I don't want it to be that way. He's such a prominent character. It doesn't make sense for me to, for me to just stab him in the back as well. But you know, the more you kind of ponder on it, it does start to make a little bit more sense. And I was sitting there, I said, you know, someone's like, they're not just gonna, someone's gonna come to my door and kill me for that. Like that's, you know, a young 20 year old trying to, you know, long standing show and then all of a sudden I come and kill off the lead um, monster. Because you know, Manu had such a powerful presence on the screen as well. So to be able to, to be defeated by, not the evilest, but the, the, the kind of, the little, you know, the, the little, the little, the little baby wolf that just was going behind everyone and under everyone, and on top of everyone. You know, um, but it, it, it worked out. It was, it was beautifully done. Yeah. Um, but I was, you know, ultimately it was done. The final act was be done. Was done under the guidance of my father, under the instruction of my father, with Caesar there. So it was a, it was a, it was a collective thing, and it was done with instruction there was you know it wasn't me just doing it it was here's the chance yeah. redeem yourself prove yourself take it learn so there was a lot involved in that but that was i had a bit of a i had a couple of sleepless nights thinking about it wow. how that how that would plan out because it was a, you know it was a, it was obviously a big scene in, know, in the series a lot of fans were pissed off i remember reading after the episode that people because he apparently killed me too I um, tried to. Yeah. No, but in, in that episode, that's right. Dead appears and I'm dead. And a lot of people are like, what the fuck? <laughs> How the fuck does that little shit kill Crixus Nigger? What the fuck? And I remember reading that kind of stuff and it was hilarious. But, um, you know, it's. Uh, I think that's what's cool about the writing is like, it can, like, let's put that in there to create this kind of a, a reaction because the world isn't fair and this kind of stuff. You know, it happens. It was like. originally Caesar. Manu, Manu came yeah. to me in the car park and he's like, Caesar! <laughs> That's his normal voice. <laughs> Brother, you're gonna kill me! And came and gave me a hug. I was like, what? He's like, I just talked to the writers, you're gonna kill me, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, originally that was, that was the original, because he went in for a meeting about it, about the ending. And, uh, and I, I think it was going to happen in that, in the battle, I'm not sure what, how they're going to take place. But then two weeks later, then we found out about the yeah. Tiberius thing. So they were switching stuff all the time, but I well, loved it's, it's, the fact that it was Tiberius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, in that meeting, I'm sure Manu will try to write the entire episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um... I thought it was so fitting in the back, too. It just worked. Then Crass is commanding it. It also gives him oh, yeah. kind of a, 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 you know, gives him a few badass points as well. Because yeah, yeah. he never really, he was like, that was like his kind of finally becoming a man, so to speak, mm. and, and that kind of stuff. But, yeah. um, Tiberius was hated for a lot of things, but he needed to deserve to die, kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. And there were a couple of moments that made it so that. <laughs> That death was very deserving, otherwise <laughs> I, I do, it to be a I do know there was an argument in regards to, like, as, as what you said, like, um, uh, Tiberius needed a justification to die. But the argument was, is like, well, didn't what you did to Kore enough for you to, you know, be hated? So you were hated and then hated even more. Um, and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's interesting, and that's what's that's what's cool about the writing, as I've just said before. Is like they do all these things to go, okay, this is what's going to happen, and this is going to elicit this response, and this and this and that. So that, and that's what makes it kind of amazing. But um, just for my, there were no moments for me. I was always like, fuck yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. I would be more, I was more bummed about things that didn't happen. Like there were scenes in like the first season that were cut out for time and stuff like that that I was a part of in that last episode and I was like and then I'd hear story things and Stephen would say okay we want to do this and this and this and then that wouldn't happen or it would go somewhere else and I would be upset about that but everything else I was like no nah, I love that that's amazing I love doing that yes give me that give me that because I loved just doing you know like everything and stuff like that so uh, you uh, yeah just, I'd like to follow up on that I was wondering what kind of scenes that you guys shot that you kind of regretted never made it into the, into the show. Oh, I, I don't, I, 
I never shot anything that ended up on the uh, the uh, editing room floor, but the scene the scene of first season was after my brother had just died, and Animaeus comes out and he's kind of looking around and he looks out on. Uh, the Ludus ground and there's just dead bodies everywhere and I'm there just by myself and Animaeus was upset and was kind of like you know I've you know these two hands have, have built this place and I, this my whole life was there or like or something like that and Agron looks at him as like I fucking pity you that this was your life and Stephen was really bummed that that got cut out but because there was so much that they had to put in there that my character hadn't developed enough, I mean, this would be my reasoning, my character hadn't developed enough in that time to warrant that staying in when there was other characters' stories that they needed to finish off. So there was nothing that I shot that I know of that, that didn't uh, make it in there. Some things might have been cut a, bit, a little bit shorter, but mainly the things that were edited were like the fight scenes. Like you do these huge fight sequences, and then in the shot, it's like, eh, eh. <laughs> like oh, I learned like twenty beats for like three weeks, and that's all that ended up in there. So. Yeah, my, mine was just a fight thing. I hadn't really lost much else, but that Gannicus fight was like seventy-five beats when we rehearsed it. It was the biggest, one of the biggest fights that they were going to have with one-on-one. -on -one. We did so much extra. I don't know if you guys knew this, but we did so much extra stuff. We would swap weapons. I'd be dual wielding. He would take a weapon off me. I'd use his weapon. He'd use mine. And then they had to cut it down to like 30, 35 beats. So to almost cut it in third, like. That was one of the best battles because we you do so much stunt training and rehearsing before you shoot it and then when it got to the day they were like we can't we're just not going to be able to fit it in so we're just going to condense it that was my biggest loss because that was such a good one-on-one -on -one to have uh, i wasn't aware of a big loss um, i think we shot i think we shot everything i didn't i didn't hear of i didn't hear of anything no. any any particular other scene that was going to be done that we didn't do yeah, I'm say, if anything, a bit of probably fight sequences, but uh, the stunts had prepared fight sequences that were probably extra long on purpose in order to cater so that they could over, you know, overshoot and get uh, some amazing coverage of some stuff. So, if anything, we, we planned uh, in advance for a little bit more fighting, but that was, you know, kind of expected. And that's, you know, we get to spend more time training and fighting, so there's no loss there. You got a man over there. Tiberius, Yo. it seemed when you had to draw stones, you understood what brotherhood actually was, and that's when you are a warrior, and that's why you killed Gannicus, because that was your adulthood, because you know what it takes to be a warrior. I appreciate that, man. Like I, I saw that, and uh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's that the moment awesome when, scene. you know... That was one of my favorite scenes when you when he has to take out his That's friend. His friend. Oh man, yeah. and Christian's yeah, was... character choice changed, and I feel like he never recovered. No, he dark, that was the he moment. darkened into this like other beast, and then it was just like I love that. Yeah, literally. Yeah, and he came back and called me and Parrot are not father anymore. Yeah. That's nice. Great acting. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the that's great writing. That's great writing. You just gotta, you know. Outright. Just, just gotta, gotta great just writing. gotta, just gotta, you know. Yeah. Do the great writing. That's it. Um, yeah, that was a great. That was a great scene. It's cool to see, you know, when you when you undertake a character, when you can see the arc and you can see how how the human changes. You know, the stages because you know we live the life that we live we might not get to experience different things so yeah. as actors we get to go through those little mini journeys of what it's like and yeah. through that we can kind of like learn about ourselves yeah. learn different things things that we do things we don't do yeah so it's interesting it's fun but that was yeah that was a that was a good learning curve for me as a person to go through that little journey I had their back at that moment, man. I was like, okay. <laughs> he, he knows what's up. He knows yeah. brother on, his, on the Romans' back, you know. Yeah. He understands. That's why they lost. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you survived, though. Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm on a goat farm, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs>
wanted to ask Simon about his scene with Loris. Because that what well, that was one of my favorite scenes of yours was when you were fighting Loris and, and you basically said if you kill me, you know, you were gonna let this slave kill you and give him the denaris and all that. And the scene where you you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember? Oh, you mean the, the training scene? With the training oh, scene of Loris. Oh, yes, yes, then, yes, yes. I'm sorry, I, I, I misheard the name, yes. Ah, Hilaris, 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 yeah. Yeah, Hilaris, that's it. Yeah, it was a, yeah, well that, that was most of that episode. That took, yeah, and that was what all the training led to, that first episode. Yeah. But I just, that was like one of the, the best scenes that I enjoyed with you because you you had the compassion for him and how good he trained you and things like that. It's a like great that. setup for my character because yeah. it shows the Roman commander in another light altogether. Yeah. Obviously ruthless and obviously manipulative yeah. but also respecting of the humblest yeah. man if he has honor if he has something exactly. to respect in him so it was great for me because it set up this paradox yeah that's one of my favorite scenes thank you yeah. Yeah, what, what made them want to want like uh, uh tiberius to die when in reality son of Crafton doesn't die he dies later in path later, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. 53 bc or something yeah. well he's his actual son publius yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So initially, the first few weeks of production, my character was Publius. Um, even throughout all of the boot camp, mm -hmm. leading up to the first episode, and then they had some ideas later on in the season that they wanted to do involving Crassus, uh, involving Crixus and Caesar. Yeah. But the yeah. writers were very delicate of wanting to create ideas and, and make them come to fruition, but also to honor the history. So they thought the safest thing to do was to create. Tiberius as a fictional son oh. and in the first episode have my younger brother be Publius so historically Publius is there correct but then there's an intermediary figure yeah. who just destroys everything but in reality Publius was actually older because that's like 71 yes. BC I think Publius was born like 86 BC so yeah 15, totally right. yeah 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 <laughs> so they had to find little ways to kind of you know yeah. match creativity and ideas of, of, of creating a, a, a show that had a kind of ambiguous um, historical background. There were certain elements, especially with Spartacus' fate, you know, we don't yeah, first, I really think. know what's, what happened. So it, it allows a certain level, level of creative freedom, but um, at the same time, you know, there were certain elements that they thought, let's just do this history. Yeah. Yeah, at first I thought you were from this and they just changed their name. Oh. Just for the, the movie. Right. The movie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what kind of got me mixed up. With that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is a simple no, yes or no question for everybody on the panel. Yes. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Always yes. Knowing yeah. what you know now, and knowing how this has impacted your life, and, and the kind of life of its own, this thing has taken on. If the agent called tomorrow and you had a job with Jeff and said, do you want this part, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Like, <laughs> knowing, like, uh, Oh, the role again. Role again. My God, yes. Yeah. Said, absolutely. You learn so much every year. And to ask me at 30, because I mean 25, ask me at 30, and I'll say the same thing based on what I did at 25. And at 35, I'll say that that's the same thing about what I did at 30. I'm sure it's the same. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a part of me that's like, wishes you can go back in time and, do, and redo it knowing what you know now. Like there is an actual yeah. yearning for that anyway. Well guys, I'm told that time is up. Oh, should we, we, we're going to show some more stuff. Oh, that's not now. <laughs> I, I don't have position to make. So, what are we going back to, do you know? Commander. <laughs> <laughs> it's your break, so you can do whatever oh. you want to do. Yeah, you got your own break. Yeah, you want to show? The ending, the, the scene where you're on the horse. Oh, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. 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 We've got to see that. <laughs>
We got a chair right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.